Steiner, Doctor of Medicine. Tonight's story is the title, All the Lonely Night. Guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. And the qualities of the worthy physician are three. The eye of an eagle, the heart of a lion, the hand of a woman. The object in point, a membership in a unique and exclusive club. The case in point, Helen Vareka. She's 27 years old, unmarried. She's a teacher in the public schools. Her particular medical problem started some time ago. It has now progressed to a most critical point. As a matter of fact, it now threatens her very life. But Helen Vareka doesn't seem... She doesn't seem to care one bit. Her fondest hope is to die. The sooner, the better. Sweet little thing. Poor, worried little thing. Poor Helen. Yes, so worried. So serious. And her sister. Her sister, so charming, happy-go-lucky. But poor Helen. Like a monkey. Like a sad, nervous little monkey. Poor, worried little thing. Has the family been notified yet? No living relatives. I called her personal physician, Dr. Hershon. He's on his way in. Good. I'd like her to have another IV in two hours. The same, 5% glucose and water. Yes, doctor. Good evening, doctor. Roger. Sorry to break up your evening, Dr. Hershon. Hope you found time to finish dinner. Well, I got through the main course. How's she making out? Not much change since I spoke to you on the phone. She's going to need more whole blood, that's for certain. I've ordered up four units. She's not very cooperative. Won't communicate at all. Helen. How are you feeling? Helen, are you feeling better now? Why did you come? To help you. I've been through all that. I don't want any help. I understand how you feel. Do not. Nobody understands. You're sick, Helen. You're not going to get over this by yourself. More pain? Has she had anything for pain? Morphine, grain, a quarter, three hours ago. Another quarter grain of morphine, stud. We'll tell me to ease the pain, Helen. I'll be back to see you in a few minutes. Chart on Miss Vareka, please. Right here, Doctor. There you are. Thanks. Doctor, will you write your orders, please? Nurse? Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Conley. Almost forgot you. Uh, Dr. Hershon, this is Miss Conley. She's a close friend of the patient. Happy to meet you, Doctor. How's poor Helen getting along? Is she any better? Well, it's a little difficult to say, Miss Conley. I don't know how familiar you are with her condition. Oh, I I've known about it two or three years. Helen and I are good friends. We went through teacher's college together. I see. We shared an apartment up until, oh, six months ago. And then she finally became so depressed, she told me that, well, the way she was, she just wasn't fit to live with anybody. Poor Helen. I has she been living alone since she left the apartment? Uh-huh. She moved way out to the west side of town, a rooming house. She had to quit her job, live off her sick leave compensation. She won't see anybody, won't answer the phone. Lanity says she hardly ever leaves the room. Not very encouraging. There's no other way she has to have the operation? She should have had surgery three months ago. The colon, the lowest section of the large intestine, was very badly ulcerated. It was past the stage where medication would help. During the past few years, we've tried everything we know. Bed rest, antibiotics, ACTH, other medical therapies. All possible treatments. You can imagine what a condition is today. The worst stages of diarrhea. 
elimination 30 to 40 times a day. Loss of blood, loss of weight, pain, fatigue, depression. Why is she so afraid of an operation? It's not the operation she's afraid of, Miss Connolly, it's the result. You see, in cases like this, the tissue is so ulcerated, so dis disintegrated, the entire colon and the rectum must be removed. Oh, my. That means that the passage of solid waste material from the body must be rerouted. We do this by creating a new exit in the lower abdominal wall, which is fitted with a specially designed container. Surgically, we term this procedure an ileostomy. Oh. I guess that would be pretty hard to accept. It is, to begin with. But after a while, just about all of them adjust to it. Paralysis, blindness, loss of an arm or leg. Most human beings can adjust themselves to almost any misfortune. Let's hope Helen is one of them. Poor, poor girl. How did it start, Doctor? Do you know? Was it like some kind of an infection or something? No, it happened much the same way a tense person could develop a type of ulcer in the stomach. In Helen's case, we term it a psychosomatic disorder. Then that's why she was going to see that psychiatrist for a while. Yes, that's right, Dr. Navarro. It's his impression that Helen's disorder started with a deep-seated personality problem, something that probably stems back to her childhood. Unfortunately, she hasn't been going to Dr. Navarro regularly enough for him to be of any real help to her. If she'd only listen to reason. That reminds me. Excuse me a moment, please. Yes, certainly. Miss Fargo, could you get in touch with Dr. Philip Navarro, the psychiatrist? All right, Doctor. If you can't get a hold of him, leave a message, will you? I'd like to have a consultation with him about Helen Barreca as soon as possible. Yes, Doctor. Doctor, I... I don't want to make a pest out of myself. There's, well, there's just one more thing I wanted to ask. Certainly, Miss Conley. What if, what if Helen keeps refusing to have the operation? Suppose she won't change her mind. Well, there's nothing we can do. We can't force her to submit to surgery. Then it's all up to her. Either she has the operation or... She won't die, will she? Doctor? Let's hope she changes her mind. Sweet little thing. Worried little Helen. Poor worried little Helen. And her sister, so happy, so full of fun. Her sister. It's always the way, isn't it? The happy ones die young. Her sister died young. Just broke the mother's heart. Now all she's got left is Helen. All she's got left is sad, worried little Helen. So serious. So anxious. So worried. Helen. How are you feeling, Helen? Dr. Navarro's here to see you. He wants to talk to you, Helen. Do you feel like talking? Been dreaming, Helen? Same old dreams? I didn't send for you. Why did you come? To talk to you. We haven't had a good talk for some time now. You came for nothing, Doctor. I'm sorry. There's nothing to be sorry about. Your treatments were showing results, Helen. We were beginning to understand the things that make you unhappy and the right way to correct the situation. You don't want to give up now, do you? I'll never let them do that to me. I'll die before I let them do it. Helen, will you listen to me a minute? When I first started treating you, we both made a promise, didn't we? We decided that all the fears, all the anxieties and resentment built up in your mind could be destroyed. And we agreed to keep on working at it until they were destroyed, didn't we? I didn't agree to this operation. I'll never agree to it. You have a very real problem, Helen. And you won't solve it by trying to run away from it. Well, I am running. And I'll take my chances. If I'm wrong, I don't care. I'd rather be dead than made over into some kind of a freak. Plastic bags glued to your skin. Odorless powders. Special dresses so people don't know what's underneath. It's filthy. It's horrible, dirty, filthy. Helen, listen to me. Get out of here. Leave me alone. 
Get out! Get out! No luck at all? Nothing. I'll try again after a while. I just can't seem to get through to her. I don't know how much longer we can keep her alive without surgery. Dr. Hershon standing by? Yes, he's up on nine, catching a little rest. Like some more coffee? No, thanks. Certainly is a stubborn one, isn't she? She's absolutely sure an ileostomy is the worst thing that can happen to her. Uh-huh. And yet Dr. Hershon was telling me that he hasn't had a patient yet that didn't finally adjust to the situation after surgery. That's usually the problem. After surgery, they don't find it half as bad as they imagined. What about her primary uh, emotional problem? It began in her formative years, apparently. Helen was retiring because she considered herself plain. She was always trying to compete with her older sister. Helen was ambitious, really a perfectionist. Physically, she could never hope to accomplish all of her ambitions. This caused frustration, anxiety, worry. I see, Doctor. Helen seemed so self-reliant. She never asked for the help and love which the parents gave to the older daughter. Finally, Helen's driving ambition brought on the physical breakdown. Teaching big classes of noisy, lively children didn't help much either. She took each one as a personal problem. So this is why she's in this condition then? Yes. Everything in her case points to illness. A feeling of rejection at home, not being able to accomplish the things she dreams of, not enough time for relaxation, fun, no freedom from worry. I think she's quite an attractive girl. Not to herself. That's why she absolutely refuses to have this surgery done. To her, it means another failure and another reason to be rejected, too. It's a rough one. 27 years old. She hasn't had much of a life. Dr. Hamilton, the Baraka girl, I think you'd better look at her. Worse? Yes, doctor. He's still trying. We're prepared for surgery, just in case. Oh, yeah, the first time. 
Yes, it's ten to four. tissue, the peritoneum muscle, fascia, and skin were closed in layers in the usual manner. Iliostomy, having been brought out of the previously selected area in the lower right side of the abdominal wall, was covered with a plastic bag sealed to the skin. Four transfusions were given during the course of the four-hour and 15-minute operation. The specimen, consisting of the entire diseased colon and rectum, was sent to the laboratory for examination. The operation was successful. Well, one thing's for certain, Helen, it's beautiful weather for your first day out of the hospital. Is it? Open the blinds, have a look outside. Thank you, Doctor. I'll say goodbye now. Oh, don't forget you have an appointment with me next Tuesday for your first surgical follow-up. I want to see you twice a week to start with, and then once a week. Pretty soon you'll be on your own. How nice. I'm sorry you still feel the way you do, Helen. You're not the first person in the world this has happened to. I know quite a few. People in public life. Performers, athletes, men and women. Practically every one of them is living a normal, useful life. Very commendable. I envy them. Don't envy them. Imitate them. Your case isn't unique. Why, there are people in this hospital right now with more trouble and heartache than you'll ever dream of. Little children, old people, young adults. You have your special problem. And like those youngsters and old people, you'll have to face up to it. You'll have to learn to live with it. Thank you, Doctor. Bye. Yes, what is it? Miss Vareka? Yes? Oh, Miss Vareka. I'm Marion Castle. I'd like to talk to you for a minute, if you don't mind. What about? What do you want? Well, it'll only take a few minutes. It's personal. May I come in, please? Well, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not feeling too well today. What is it you want? Well, I'm a friend of Dr. Hirshan's. Please, I've come quite a long way to see you. Please, may I come in? Well? Strange, isn't it? The way we behave at first. What are you talking about? I started painting pictures all by myself in the back room. Of course, I couldn't draw for sour apples, but that didn't faze me. 
My first masterpiece was a portrait of myself. <laughs> you should see it. Looks like an old witch on Halloween. All that's missing is a broom. I'm sorry, Mrs. Castle. I'm busy. What do you want? Two things, Helen. But first of all, I'd like to talk to you about your operation. You know the standing joke. Women love to compare operations. Very funny joke. Would you mind leaving, Mrs. Castle? Oh, come off it, Helen. Let down the hair for a few minutes, will you? It's been over two months since your operation. It's about time you shook loose and started living again, isn't it? Look, Mrs. Castle, I mind my own business. Why don't you do the same? Haven't you got enough to keep you busy? I have more than enough, Helen. I have a husband and three boys and a little two-by-four chicken ranch. I'm a plain old housewife 90% of the time. But every once in a while, I trade in my blue jeans for a dress and try to act like a club woman. That's Dr. Hershon's idea. He loves to manage people's lives, doesn't he? Only when he thinks he can help them. You see, the doctor and I are trying to form a little club here in town, and we'd like you to be one of its charter members. I'm not a joiner. I like my life the way it is. Now, would you go, please, Mrs. Castle? I'm busy. I'm a class A flop with this recruiting stuff, aren't I? I'm sure you'd like the club, Helen. Why don't you give it a fling? It's going to be very exclusive, and only ileostomy cases can join. Well, now, isn't that just too noble of you, Mrs. Castle? And what will you have your club members do? Sit around and cry on each other's shoulders while you pat their heads and tell them it's not so bad after all? Very charitable. I bet it gives you a wonderful feeling of accomplishment. A room full of freaks having a gay party, laughing and dancing, pretending they're normal, they're just like anybody else. Oh, how can you be so smug? What do you know about it anyway? Because I'm one of those freaks, Helen. I've been one for 12 years. That's how much I know about it. Twelve years? The very same operation you had, and I felt just as bad as you do right now. Everybody does. Look, forget the dramatics. Helen, I'm simply asking you to join us tomorrow night. I think you'll get a kick out of it. I think it'll help you. There'll be, oh, about a dozen people there, all ileostomies. Think it over, won't you? We'd love to have you come. I don't think I can make it, but thanks anyway. Well, I'll leave the address just in case. It'll be around 8 o'clock. Goodbye, Helen. Nice meeting you. Goodbye. Club. This is Miss Vereka, ladies and gentlemen. Miss Helen Vereka. 